I've got this white piece of paper and today I thought we would just kind of do an overall review of all the things we've learned and then go ahead and learn how to make things glow in the dark. Oh, like the aura, whatever that's going on. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Let's say you wanted to paint, uh, you know, a bear and with the Aurora Borealis in the background. How would you go about doing that? That's what we'll kind of go over today. So first things first, you know how to make a new canvas. Congratulations. You know how to rename your layers so that you can keep things orderly. I'll go ahead and name this one paper. And you can either click the little gear to do that or you can just click on the name of the layer to change that. We normally have a couple of different layers, one being our sketch layer. So we'll type in sketch. This is where we do our rough pencil sketching or just where we're thinking about ideas. What do I want to draw today? Let's say I sketch in my circle. You can follow along with me or you can just listen to this part that's up to you. We sketch in super loose, right? We don't care about all these extra lines because we can get rid of this layer later anyway. So let's say I've done my beautiful sketch. Then we get our next layer and we call that one ink or lines. That's where we switch over to the color black. And we typically get the pen tool because the pen tool, if you press lightly or firmly, it'll change the size of your stroke but it won't change the opacity. If I try to do that with the pencil, let me make it large so you can see. And I sketch lightly, it's gray, but I press harder, it goes black. And if we did this with our lines, when we come to fill it with color, now it's got this weird outline that goes from gray to black. We don't want that. Um, Betsy, I'm sorry to interrupt, but- No problem. I, I pick pen, mm -hmm. I pick uh, color. Mm -hmm. And when I go over there, I have this little sign, you know, like um, a circle with a line through it. So I'm not- Oh, uh, like, like Ghostbusters, no sign? Probably uh -huh. something about your layers. Go ahead and go to your layers window and see if everything is unlocked. Do you have the little dot, the little bullet point next to it oh, on? The, no, the bullet wasn't there. Okay, now it is. Gotcha, okay. Uh, just Got it. Second. Now. It looks like Mickey needs to have me let her in again. There we go. So after we do our sketch, he keeps telling me, please move this window away from the shared. I don't have a window open, Zoom. What are, what are you doing to me right now? There she is. There she is. Yes, she is. Well, I don't know what Zoom is talking Hi. about. Hey there. Hi. Let me find that. So we have our lines layer where we do our final ink, and if it's too difficult to see which line we're inking over our sketch, we can go ahead and go to our sketch layer and make it lighter by changing this percentage up here of the opacity. I can make that nice and faint. This is kind of like when we use our kneading eraser to get rid of the extra pencil lines. And then we do our inking layer. We make our lines so pretty, which I'm not doing right now, but as a review, this is where our final line work would be. Oh. And we would get another layer. Call this one color. And I have to move it underneath the line so that when I start adding my colors, it doesn't go over the lines. If I have my color layer on top, it's going to go right over those black lines. I don't want that, so I have to move it below the line layer. So I can color in my wonderful drawing. And we also learned with the paint bucket, if I leave it on canvas, it'll stop the color wherever it sees something else on the entire canvas, like my sketch layer. That's why this isn't filling in. If I want it to ignore everything except what's on this layer, I change it to layer. Boom, fills it in. Let's check that again. If I have it on canvas and I try to click the eye, 
it's getting stopped by all my little red lines there. But if I change it to layer, I can fill it all in. Whoops. My line wasn't connected. There we go. I can fill it all in and it won't get stopped by the Oh my goodness. Cool <laughs> I, I got my layers mixed up here. Let me seal that off. Yeah. Okay. Here we I go. One more that. time. So how if do you I have it on canvas, yeah. If how do you check what? It looks like I got my layers mixed up too. So do I just hit the layers to see what's there? Yeah, if you toggle on and off these little bullet points on the side, it'll show you what's on that layer. Okay. So if I go like, oh, did I accidentally put a spot of color on my lines? I kind of click this on and off. If it blinks, then yes, I definitely did put it on the wrong layer. So that's the difference between canvas. It'll stop at anything on the canvas, but if it's on layer, it'll only stop at anything on that layer. So then you have to put it on the lines layer, right? Yeah, like let's say I I am on my color layer right now and I say canvas, it'll stop at the lines layer. Well, how but you're on their color layer. Yeah, I have it set to canvas. Oh. If I had it if I had it set to layer, then it would go all over the place. Oh god. If I set it to okay. canvas. Yeah, then I can go ahead and color them in that way. So let me try canvas. Oh yeah. And the other thing we've been learning about is if you want to put on some kind of effect, like a blur, you need to have that on a separate layer. So let's say I have something on this layer that I want to be in motion. We go up to filter and you can choose your little motion blur. Click on the little preview box so you can see how it's going to affect your actual thing and you can move that slider around to see how much blur will get added. You can do the same thing with the Gaussian blur. The Gaussian blur will go in all directions. And go poof. You can play with that one as well. We have been using this also with the opacity layers, making things lighter in the background, darker as they get to the front, all kinds of uses. Any questions? <laughs> There's our whole review. All right, we shall proceed then. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this file. I'm going to get a new one another eight by eight canvas. I'm going to stop my share for a second because it's still blinking at me that I have a window in the way. So I just want to make sure that it's not. Okay, there we go. So to glow, first thing we're going to do is we're going to need it to be nighttime or darker than white because if white is the brightest thing ever we can't make anything glow brighter than white so we have to lower everything else down i'm going to find myself a nice deep midnight blue fill in my whole layer when you shared my my alpaca went away what happened what Your alpaca <laughs> went away is my window somehow big again could you yeah. make me move it over? Trying. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Betsy. Okay, I got it. All right. Next, I'm going to get a sketch layer, just like we do when we have white paper. So your first layer, you're making everything blue. Yeah, we're making a nice deep blue. And you did that by just paint bucket, right? Yep, just using the paint bucket. 
Then I'm getting a sketch layer. And I'm going to sketch out the thing that I want to glow for the purposes of the demonstration. I'll go with a candle because that's nice and easy to relate to. Now, are you using a pen or a pencil for this particular sketch? This one's a pencil. Is it? Because it looks all dark. It doesn't look gray. It looks all black. If I, yeah, let me do a little pressure test. Mm. Oh, yeah. OK, pencil. Let's go so we want, we want black now? Yep, I'm just sketching in black. You could also sketch in white if you prefer. Since we have a dark background, I'll show you what that looks like. It's a little awkward on the brain, though, because it's like in reverse. It's like a negative. So I tend to just sketch in darker colors. So you did something, at least on my screen, it, it, everything went black. Everything went gray. Everything went black. How about now? There, now, now it's perfect. Yeah. Huh, that's strange, okay. Once you have your sketch up and running, I'm going to get a new layer. Let's call this one color. We are not having a lines layer today because we're not going to be using any lines. Oh, <gasps> shock. <laughs> so I have my color right above my sketch and I'm going to switch to the pen tool. And I'm going to get myself a nice warm orangey color, rather dark. And I'm going to use it to outline my flame. And fill that in. Like so. I'll lighten up my sketch so it doesn't get in the way so much. And whatever color you want the candlestick to be, let's say I want it to be pink. I'm going to choose from way down here near the black. So I'm going to start with almost a purpley color. Fill that in. I can turn off my sketch layer. I don't need that anymore. And on my color layer, I'm going to protect alpha. What does protect alpha do? If you can recall, it's when we're coloring, it won't add any new pixels. So it only allows me to draw within the shape I've already made. If I take that off and I do the exact same thing, you can see it goes all over the place. So when I protect my alpha, I am going to get my little dotted square tool, my selection tool, and just select the candlestick part. Everything else should go a weird blue. And then I'm going to go ahead and get a lighter version of my candlestick color. So I get my eyedropper, get my original, and then I move it up over into the whiter corner, getting my pink. And I want to use my gradient tool 
transparent to foreground. From this little pull down menu up here, usually we go foreground to background or just foreground, but I want transparent to foreground. Then when I drag a line on my candlestick, you'll see one side turns lighter. I want it to be the top, so I'm going to drag upward. We'll do that one more time. I've got it selected. I've got transparent to foreground. That means transparent is going to go first. So I want to drag from the bottom of my candle upward so that the top of the candlestick becomes lighter and the bottom becomes darker. Then we press D for deselect. Okay, that's not working. <laughs> Nope, not working. Let's do it one more time then. Well, it, I could do it through the menus. I didn't get it through D, but it's a big deal. I got it. Oh, okay. Then we're going to get an airbrush tip instead of the pen or the pencil. We're going to get the airbrush, which is very soft, very fuzzy type of brush. I'm going to select the original color of my flame. And then I'm going to move my little color circle more toward white. I'll make my brush really big and just paint in the center. So that it gives a softer edge. Let me zoom in so you can see a little better here. All I want is this slight soft edge and different coloration. And I'm going to push my color a little more toward yellow Add some yellow in there. Move it closer to white. And closer to white. And have our white right in the center. going to be the internal glow. For the external glow, I'm going to get a new layer. Call that one glow. It's going to go underneath the color layer so that it doesn't cover up the flame. I'm going to use my gradient tool again, that one where we just do a line and turn it to foreground background. I want to get the color of the background. So I'll use my little eyedropper. And then I'm going to choose a very kind of dark red. And over here it says shape. You can choose from linear or circular. We want circular. And I'm going to start at the center of my candle and just pull a little bit outward until it gives us a little more of like a halo glow. Okay, do it one more time. I like it. Sure. Let me back up here. So I got my gradient tool. Actually, you could just go ahead and use the transparent to foreground again. No, you can't. Let's go to foreground background. That's the one I used. Foreground background. The shape is circular instead of linear. So it'll make a circle. My colors are kind of a dark red. 
And then the other color is the background itself. I want to make sure my red color is on top. Because just like the name says, foreground to background, it's going to do the foreground color first and then the background color second. So I'm going to start at the center of my candle flame and pull outward. And it'll make a little glow around the flame. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And we can get a little candle wick. Oops, not on my glow layer, on my color layer. Oops, not with that color though. And then to blur the outside edge of this candle flame a little bit, I'm going to select it with my lasso tool, go back to filter and Gaussian blur, and I'm going to move that slider until it's blurred just a little bit, a little fuzzy. Control D for deselect. there we have our basic premise of making things glow. We're going to have a white center and we're going to have our brightest color, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, and the external halo of it. So let's apply that to an actual cool thing. Like let's say we have a glowing spirit fish. Fish are easy to draw. I'm going to get a new canvas. And I'm going to try it again with my sketch layer. Get my pencil tool. And I'll sketch out a little curving raindrop. This will be the body of my fish. Sketch out some kind of big frilly tail. Some pretty little fins. Not an anatomically correct fish, that's okay. We're just learning about glowing stuff. Whoops, no, no, whoops. I'll just, I'll just put a little little mouth indicator there, I guess. Maybe How are you guys here. doing this fine Wednesday morning? Can you it's guys fine hear me? Wednesday okay? morning? Can yeah, you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I said evening. I corrected myself and I said evening. Oh, okay. We're doing oh, okay. well. Yeah. <laughs> can you guys hear me? doing pretty good. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can hear, hear you. you. I'm on my phone. Because I think my alpaca is kicking me out of the Zoom thing. That's strange, but if that's what you think it is. On my PC, I couldn't get back huh. on. Okay, we'll do do whatever works. So how'd you make that candle glow? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, used another that. layer. Your so this layer just has. Out. Yeah, we're gonna do it again. Don't worry, we're gonna do it again with some fish. But we're generally going to have a layer that has the glow behind it and then our uh, actual uh, color layer. Okay, so I'm fish. sketching out a fish that's going to be some one. kind of awesome glowing fish when we're done with it. Okay. I have a feeling these Let's fins are too this. close to the head, though. Let's move those. Hey, Betsy. Uh -huh. I'm going to go. You did a Ruby class. 
about like the anime Ruby. Yeah, that was a long time ago, but I remember it. Do you actually like Ruby? I liked the first season that I saw. I liked the, uh, what do you call it? Like the premise of it. I thought the transforming weapons were cool. Four person team is cool. The, you know, basing it on fairy tales was cool. The actual show, it was hard for me to get through. <laughs> uh, Betsy? Oh, thank yeah. goodness. Yeah, do, you have a, I, do you have a layer have... where the background is a different color? Not yet. We're just sketching out our fish right now. So this is On layer candle, one. yes. This right so now this... is layer one, yep. I don't know why I said thank goodness. Um... <laughs> you must agree. I... <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, watch this interesting video. It's a very long video, it's, but it was interesting to watch. It's called like, why Ruby is, is so disappointing. And it's really interesting because this guy goes into deep detail about like- I don't like videos like that though, what? because there might be somebody out there who really loves Ruby and all of it. So to say like, oh, here's what's wrong with Ruby. Here's what's so disappointing with Ruby. I'm like, well, who are you to judge? Let people like what they well, like. He's not, like. He's not like that. He, he just talks about. about yeah, like I, I know like, it's part of the like YouTube marketing that people will click it. If you say what's so disappointing with, you know, this thing that, yeah, more people will click it. So I understand making a living. On the other hand, I don't like promoting that kind of judgmental. Um, Review. He's more judgmental about it, though. He, it's actually interesting because it's more like a documentary where he talk goes into the to, into like the history of the studio and the people who did it, and he like res clearly like respects like the people behind it. Well, and it's really interesting. Like you got you got to name it like that to get on the algorithms. I guess so. Yeah. I don't like this dorsal fin. I know fish have a dorsal fin. I'm going to take it off. I don't like it. All right. So hopefully you've sketched out something that's kind of like a fish. I'm going to get a new layer. Call this one color. And I'm going to choose the colors for my fish. I think I'll go with like sort of a teal. I'm going to start kind of in the middle or down toward the black to get a darker tone of the color. Because remember, for things to glow, we have to go toward white. So if we start our colors too light, you can't go any lighter than white. Uh, hooey. I think I'll hooey? start over with my, my eraser doesn't erase very good. Is there something I'm doing wrong there? It might just be too small. You can make the brush control of your uh, eraser oh, bigger or smaller. Oh, yeah. It's way down to like eight. Yeah, and it just takes you forever. It's like trying to erase with the head of a pin. It's awful. <laughs> yeah. OK, much better. Thank you, Betsy. You're welcome. I'm going to color in the body of my fish. Oops, with my pen tool, not my pencil tool, for reasons explained earlier. So that's a, a different color now, right? Or is that the same color? It's just over the red. It looks like. yeah. Yep, oh. it's still the same, same color. Okay. For the body. And I'll get a little bit lighter color for the fins because they're going to be more translucent than the body anyway. Oh, I was going to say something. Uh, yeah, the guy talks about it for a while. And one thing I think is interesting is kind of 
they didn't when they went in like those guys like they was originally pitched by a dude who liked doing fight really cool fighting animations mm-hmm. and that's why all the fights are so cool because they're made specifically by a dude who like knew what he was doing loved his craft but then he left the writing to like for the rest of the not fighting parts he left it to like these two guys to write the show and he gave them like anime homework where they had to like where it's like you know to get inspired by you know like cowboy bebop avatar avatar Mm -hmm. like the legends of korra that kind of stuff yeah yeah and they weren't great writers like they weren't great at it and a lot of the stuff from the show is kind of just stuff copied from those other shows and kind of shoved in there yeah it might have been from like a budgeting thing like they couldn't hire hollywood writers maybe these are the only guys they could hire right (laughs) well no it was clearly like a thing done out of like those guys specifically like it's but i mean like why anything in it that looked copied to me i didn't like it that well no, it's more like no, no, I can't. I didn't think it was copied. I mean, I thought it was kind of. I didn't okay, like the now, story, I'm so not I'm going to go with total, you on that. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a total ripoff. I'm just saying that's like they kind of copied stuff from stuff they thought was cool, but didn't really understand why it was cool in the first place. Got it. It's like the, the gargoyle way- instead of the cathedral. Ah! Yeah. I heard a scream. Is it something I can help with? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I went to color in the goldfish and my whole page and the goldfish, except for a couple fins, turned orange. Um, Okay, control Z that. Yep. Yep. Control Z that. And then uh, probably change your paint bucket setting, like Kristen said. Okay, so I probably should get another layer before I start coloring in, right? Yep, I've got these two on different layers. So I've got my sketch on top and then my color layer. You can also stick in that dark background color. Let's call it paper. And we'll get so another... why did it? Why did my paint bucket color everything when I have closed the gap on there? Maybe there's too it's big of gaps. It's possible that if it was on layer instead of canvas. Right then it no it's on canvas like for instance if i do this and then i have another layer and i'm not paying attention and i finish it on that and then i keep it on layer it'll still bleed out just because there's that little gap that's on a different layer so i would have to use canvas to get that filled in whoops Canvas. Yeah. But it could be something entirely different, too. That's the beauty, the struggle of digital art. What went wrong? Too many kick rolls. Yeah. <laughs> too many what? Controls. They give you too many controls. Too, much. too many things that can go wrong. Yep. I'm going to get my airbrush again. Yay! I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> now you got to celebrate the little successes because they don't always come to you. So <laughs> take them while you got them. I'm going to start with my body color. And then in my color picker, I'm going to go more toward the light, more toward saturation. So I have a brighter color on the inside. What did you, how'd you do that? I'm using the airbrush instead of pen or pencil. There's one called airbrush. Okay. I'm going to use my eyedropper tool to get my original color, which is kind of dull and dark in the middle of my value square and move it up kind of to the upper right so it can be lighter and brighter. (laughs) 
I'm going to do that again, move it lighter and brighter into this corner. But you filled in his eyes and everything when you painted him. Yeah, I'm going to add the eye, I think, last, just because it's black and on top. So it'll just be easier to do it without the eye for now. <laughs> Once you get kind of to the top of your color square, you're like, well, I can't go up anymore. We're going to start going to the left toward white. So I, I'm pulling up my airbrush and I mm -hmm. pull a lighter color in the middle of this, right? And I have a new layer. Yes. And this layer yes, should yes, be yes. called shading. No, we can do that if you want. <laughs> I'm coloring it right on the color layer itself. Okay. Just to keep it easy. Or er. So you've done three different levels of airbrushing. Yeah. Here was my, there's my original color. Let me do this on a different layer, actually. Does your airbrush look like a paint bucket? No, it's actually your, your pencil tool, the one you use for pencil and pen. And if you slide down all your options of brushes, between pencil, pen, eraser, edge brush, edge pen. There should be one named airbrush in this long menu of things. Right, I, I'm over to the left and I hit it, but maybe maybe I should hit pencil first, then airbrush. And you just kind of squirreled it around there, huh? Yep, just on the inside of my shape. Oh, it's making so I've got a very four different small, colors here. It's making a very small, uh, and I got it up to 50. Should I, is there a different? Oh, you can go up to like 200. You can keep going and going and going. With the airbrush? Yeah, with airbrush on the brush control. Even if I come to the end of my little bar here at 144, you can actually keep going and going and going. And you can see it's going up to 700, 800, 1200. Yeah. Like you can go much, much larger. Oh, I'll take good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Still doesn't look like it's doing a very big area. Maybe I'm not pressing. So you just made kind of a teardrop. Yep. There. And then how'd you do the next level? You just went down on your color wheel? On your value where it goes from black to white. Right. I'm going up and up and up and up and up. So my first color was kind of dull and dim in the middle here. Yeah. And then the next color I go up, next color I go up mm -hmm. and it'll get brighter and brighter and brighter. And you go around the original, one, right? Yep. Just kind of going around the original and then after you come all the way to the top that very center is just white i'll do the same thing with my fins over here i'll start with the fin color and it's already pretty close to the top but i'm going to go color lighter whoops that's not airbrush get that internal glow if I'm all the way at the top and I can't get any brighter, I have to go to the left, more toward white. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, it makes some nice effects. What are you doing to your fins? Nothing yet? Same thing. I'm going to start with my fin color move my circle a little up on my color picker so that it gets a lighter color. Color in that fin. Not to the very edge, but just on the interior here. Go up a little more. Get the interior. Going a little more toward white. Put a little bit of white in there. So all in all, the interior glow looks like this. Mm -hmm. 
and I can go back in with my pen tool and add my little fish eye if I want to here. Probably should put it on another layer, but I'm being adventurous. Just sticking it right on the same layer. And for the outer glow, I'm going to get a new layer. You can use the gradient tool again and just make it a circle. Whoops. But since my, let's see, let me show you how it goes here. Oh, other way. Nope, other way. There we go. So you can just make a circle but it doesn't really follow the contours of the fish and doesn't look that great. So when you have something that's not just a circular glow, you just do the glow by hand with your airbrush, making it nice and big. On my glow layer, I'm going to get one of these lighter colors that are right next to white. And I'll just hand paint around my shape. And because it's on a different layer, I can go, oh, you know, it's a little too bright. I kind of want to knock it down a little bit. Now I can change the opacity to go down. Or I can check out the blending options, such as, what's the difference? No, dodge. So there that's we go. an airbrush with a lighter color. Is that what you're? Yep. This was the original color here, which is one of the. Uh, the colors right next to white in my fin. Ah, okay. So, I have fine so it's pretty bright. Color. And an airbrush with it, but on the other, on a new layer. Yeah, on a new layer. This is all on a new layer right here. And the fish is on its own layer. Now my brush, I used to have a thing that would let me make that brush bigger or smaller. I think I lost track. The brush control? Oh, there it is. Oh, Just... <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. All right. I can't get rid of it. I'm getting rid of that. There it is, brush control. But I want my brush to be really big and it's not. You can also hold oh. down shift and alt together and then drag to the right. That's one of the shortcuts for changing your brush size. Sometimes it doesn't work though, so I usually don't tell people. <laughs> is that is is this whole thing inspired by that one YouTube video? How to like draw make glow effect in in a fire alpaca? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that video. But yeah, I remember now. There's that girl that does, uh, actually, she does glowing fish, huh? Because <laughs> I think it's, yeah. yeah, at the beginning of the term, I was looking through YouTube videos and getting ideas for tablet classes. I totally forgot about that one. It must have been stored in my subconscious. Could, could you tell me how to get back? The tool that allows me to choose between the pen and the brush and the airbrush. I, I turned it's it off because I could. Up here. I don't know where. It should be called brush. Tool. Is someone's on. cat meowing for them? Yes, mine. Um, <laughs> it has a check mark by it, but I don't see it. You don't see the toolbar? I. I 
I don't see the bar that allows me to pick between the pen and the pencil and the- Oh, arrow. that one is, let me double check the name. No, nope, not brush control. Uh, uh, oh, it, it might be that brush. Nope. That one's not brush size, brush control, no. Brush preview, no. Okay, mine doesn't look glowing, but I like it. Can I share <laughs> okay. my screen? Can I share sure, my screen? Let me stop share. Yeah, go for it. Oh, I can't Kristen, share my screen. Brush. I can't share my oh, screen. Because you're on the phone, that's right. Just, just lift your phone up and we'll see it that way. <laughs> yeah, show us. Whoa! I have to. I don't yeah, know what I did, oh, but I like go. it. Oh, it <laughs> okay. is cool. It is a cool looking fish. I know, but it's not glowing. It, it's, it's got not like glowing, a but that's okay. Glossy in that that white outline and and make that glow. Yeah, that actually might work. Do, do what? what on your background layer yeah your background layer go on that layer and then go to filter 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 where's filter it's one of the menus next to layer and select should be up at the top somewhere oh yeah there we go i had to, it hides okay i'm at filter okay. and then you're going to select the gaussian blur Got it. And then you're going to move the slider to the right until things go fuzzy. <laughs> What's supposed to go fuzzy? Your... Am I supposed to, have I highlighted some, I should have highlighted something to go fuzzy, right? No, it should have done the whole layer. Go ahead and click on the preview box. Does that have a little check mark by it? Preview. Should be out right underneath the slider. Oh yeah, it's checked. Preview. Oh, it is checked. Okay. We'll pull it all the way to the right and say okay and see if anything happens. Oh, okay. No. No? Okay. Well, I tried. <laughs> no, but like I it. love this. I, lo I love how this turned out. I've got to put some good paper in here and print it. <laughs> all right. And then Kristen, did you ever get your brush menu back? I'm stuck on Ooh. an airbrush. And I don't know how to get rid of the airbrush and go back to a brush. Or pencil. On your window menu, is there a yeah. check mark by brush? If there isn't, there should be. Well, there is, but it didn't change anything. Maybe it's hidden somewhere. Okay. Oh, there it is. Now it's it's in the back, and I can't actually get these to. They they won't leave room for all three of them. They're all. I just can't get them all to. All right, I'm going to share my screen. Right. And okay. Can watch. Yeah. What's going on with this? Let's do a little problem solving. Okay, share screen. There it is. So there you can see I have my brush choices. Mm -hmm. And. Underneath them is my brush control, but mm -hmm. okay. But now where's my um, my color palette went away, and they all they don't want me to. <laughs> oh, I see what that. you mean. Yeah, where's my color uh, where palette? So you have, have to shrink. Palette. Yeah, down at the bottom where it says color and brush control, that's where you have to click, uh -huh. so that they're like stacked on top of one another. But if you don't like that. You can pull it out first and then try to smush it in between the two like oh, that. Cool. Yes. That works. Okay, good enough. Yeah. I can live with it. That is really good, <laughs> but I, I'm okay with that. I can do that. So right. what did what tool did you use to make that glow? That Air glossomer? Brush. Oh, airbrush. Well, so you oh, just oh. airbrushed your yeah. Yeah. See, That's when you do it by hand. Around my, I airbrushed around my to make like a shadow, but not, I don't know how I got the white thing there, but okay. It happens. <laughs> no, this is, this is way fun. <laughs> way fun. All right. Well, today is the last class though. We're going to be going on our winter break, but 
my little homework for you would be make your own digital art piece. Use something you learned. It doesn't have to be everything that you've learned. But if you're like, hey, I kind of remember that lesson where we use layers to make this depth, or I kind of remember that one where we made a fish glow, just try it out. Just try and see and, if you can make something nice. Make and something. And then send it to us in the form of a PNG, which is what they like you to export, and, and we'll put it in the winter art show. So nice. then you have to hurry. Don't don't wait. Do it now. <laughs> wow. All I got to oh, say is see. wow. I wow, thank you, oh, Betsy. You're welcome. Let's Wait, see that's like. printed on paper. Yeah, she printed yeah. it out right now. Yeah, you could make like note wow, cards and all kinds printer. of stuff. Yeah. 